Hello everyone, Only Draven here again, and thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 3. Today we're going to be going over the basics of a simple, refined storage situation. So basically a storage computer for all the different gubs and materials that you've been gathering. So, as normal, we're going to use several different types of components to put this together. Um, I've already created a power source. We have a, re a small reactor going. Uh, if you need to know how to build a reactor, there's another tutorial for that. I'll link that in the credits of this video. So be sure to check that out as well. Um, so there's a bunch of different stuff we're going to need. They're not all in the specific order, but uh, we're going to need some en energy conduit to get power to the different machines. Um, energy conduit is some conduit binder and some conductive iron. We're going to need machine casings. We'll need several of these as these are the building blocks for multiple of the other components. And this is just some quartz enriched iron and it's in a full square there. We're going to take that, we're going to go to, we're going to need one controller. For that we need quartz enriched iron, silicone, a diamond, and a machine casing. We're also going to need a grid, which again is quartz enriched iron, machine casing, construction core, destruction core, and two improved processors. I personally prefer the crafting grid, which is an upgrade from the grid. There's several different types of grids you can use, but the crafting grid requires a normal grid, crafting table, and an advanced processor. Next, we're going to need a disk drive, which is quartz enriched iron, machine casing, and two advanced processors. And to go with that, we're going to need a storage disk, of which there are several different sizes. The smallest and easiest to make is the 1K storage disk. That takes quartz-enriched iron, some redstone, some glass, and a 1K storage part. Next, we're going to need a solder, and that is quartz-enriched iron, two sticky pistons. The solder is how you make all of the processors and the cores. Okay. Now there are three more parts here and I have a wire network transmitter, network receiver, and a network card. And we're going to talk about those in a few minutes. First we're going to start with just the basic of the storage that we talked about. So we'll go over here and we're going to grab our parts. I just got some stacks of those here. one of those. Okay, so first things first, right off the bat, first thing you need is the controller. Okay? Drop him here. He's going to need some power. So now that that's going, it's got that pretty blue color going. So you have your controller going. Now after you have your controller, you're going to want to put down solder. The solder won't work without the controller, but you don't have to run individual power to it. It works as long as it's next to the controller there. And the solder is what you're going to use, as I mentioned a moment ago, to make your processors and your cores, such as those four there. Okay. Once you've got that up and going, the next thing you need is your grid. I have a crafting grid here. Put that on top of your controller. You can, don't have to be in this exact configuration, but this is the most simple. Crafting grid is where you're going to get all the supplies we're going to, you're going to be able to interface with. And then the last thing you're going to need is a way to store it itself. And that is going to be your disk drive. Now the disk drive, when you right click on it, it's going to show you how much storage you have. Right now you don't have any. This is where you're going to insert your disk drives, your storage disks. So your storage disks go inside. The base one will hold up to 8 here. And as you can see now it says 0 of 1,000. So I can hold 1,000 items in a central inventory here. So let's see how that works. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab some conduit binder. I'm going to grab some conductive iron. Oops, well, and then I'm going to drop it. I'm going to pick it up. Okay. As you'll remember, that is what we used to make our energy conduit. So we're going to use that as an example here. So open up your interface. You can just shift, left click those items, and now they're going to be up here. And it's going to list every p item that you put in your inventory will now be up here. And there's different ways that you can look at that ascending and descending. Different displays, craftables, no. You can also sort by quantity or name or their ID. Okay? So 
we're going to build some energy conduits. And this is why I like the crafting grid. So basically, we're going to go down here. I'm going to put energy conduits. There they are. If you click on that and click the little plus symbol, if you have all of the items in your storage, it will now show it right here. And you can literally just drag off and make as many as you'd like. If it's missing something here, that means you don't have enough of that in the inventory. You'll have to make it. But once you're done with a specific pattern, just click the X, and that clears it out. You throw that in your inventory by dragging and dropping or by shift left clicking. Now that in information is all in there as well. So that is the basics of refined storage. There are other components and things that you can add to this, but this is really all you need to get a basic storage system going, which is way more convenient than a bunch of chests, a bunch of drawers. And the crafting grid makes crafting very easy. Now again, I recommend making some of the larger and more of the actual storage disks to increase because it will fill up quickly. But that is your basic setup. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is having a second grid system connected to this one wirelessly. And that's what these three components here are for. There are three things you need. There's a network transmitter, which takes a machine casing, construction core, destruction core, three advanced processors, and three ender pearls. And then a network receiver, which is the exact same components, but in a slightly different configuration. And a network card, which is six quartz enriched iron, two pieces of paper, and an advanced processor. So let's see how that works. So right over here, we're going to grab those components. Grab us a network card. And we're going to go ahead and say we have another section of the map, depending on how far away it is, distance matters. But say you have another section like a farm. Uh, maybe you have the chickens and such. You want to have another access that's not have to keep bringing all of your loot and items to put back into this. So you want to create a second one. So what you need is a network receiver. You're going to put that over by where you want your next grid to be. Slap yourself another grid on top. Crafting grid will work. Okay, so there's that. And the next thing you need is your network card. Now the network card, what you want to do is you want to put it in your inventory down here on the bar, and you want to right-click on the network receiver. Okay, here's why I did that. If you scroll over your inventory now, you'll see that network card says it is linked to 2345811112. That's the coordinates of that receiver. So we'll come over here, we're going to put a network transmitter down. Oh. By connecting it to this, it does not need its own power connection. It has power now. We're going to open up the transmitter, and we're going to put the network card inside. Now, as you can see, this has power. It's up and running. It does not need access to a power source once those components are connected. And once it is, you can click on it. You now have access to your same inventory at another remote location. Those three components will allow you to have a whole another separate section. You can slap another transmitter down. You can have another set somewhere else. You can have multiple different interfaces connecting to this central storage. All using the same thing. You just need another pair of receivers and transmitters and another network card. And that will let you set up another location using the exact same steps. Now, these do draw quite a bit of RF, which is power, from your reactor over here. So at some point, if you add a lot of these, you will need to upgrade to a stronger reactor or power source. But for a couple of them in the basic machines, that's more than enough. So that's really all there is to basic refined storage and then wirelessly connecting a second interface to your wireless storage as well. And both locations now have access to be able to craft remotely. And that's it. Thank you everyone for watching today. If you have any other questions or comments or you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Um, also, if there's a tutorial on something specific in Sky Factory that you haven't seen yet or you'd like me to make, please feel free to put it in the comments as well and I'd be happy to put something together. I'll try to put out a couple of these every week. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great week. Thank you.